For the first time in recorded history, scientists drilling into a supervolcano discovered something that defied every model they trusted. The caldera beneath Maples had not collapsed the way it should have, and the implications are terrifying. Right now, more than half a million people sleep above a volcanic system that may not have released its full fury. What if the largest eruption in European history left its magma chamber intact? What if the pressure beneath these streets is far greater than anyone imagined? And what if the very thing that made scientists feel safer has now made this volcano more dangerous? Compi Flegre stretches 13 kilometers across the western edge of Naples. Unlike Vesuvius, which dominates the skyline with its iconic cone, this volcano hides in plain sight. Its caldera sprawls beneath neighborhoods, ancient ruins, and busy harbors. Children play soccer on fields that sit atop buried craters. Apartment blocks rise where fumaroles once steamed. But the ground has never stopped moving. Since 2005, the earth here has been rising. By 2025, instruments recorded approximately 1.4 meters of cumulative uplift at the Rioni Terra monitoring station. Earthquake swarms have intensified, with magnitudes reaching 4.4 to 4.6, the largest since modern monitoring began. The Italian civil protection raised the alert level, and scientists are paying attention in ways they never have before. This is not Vesuvius. This is something far more unpredictable. Understanding Compiflagre requires understanding what a caldera truly is. When most people picture a volcano, they imagine a towering cone with smoke rising from the summit. Vesuvius fits that image perfectly, but calderas form through a different, more catastrophic process. Imagine a vast underground chamber filled with molten rock. When that chamber empties violently during a massive eruption, the roof collapses inward. What remains is not a mountain, but a depression, sometimes filled with water, sometimes sprawling beneath cities. Yellowstone in the United States sits atop such a structure. Santorini in Greece formed from similar collapse. But here is the critical point that many overlook. Calderas are not safer than cone volcanoes. The absence of a towering peak does not mean the absence of danger. These structures can remain active for tens of thousands of years, building pressure, releasing it in episodes, then building again. The cycle is slow by human standards, but relentless by geological ones. Compi Flegre has followed this pattern for millennia. Two colossal eruptions shaped the caldera we see today. The first, known as the Campanian Igdimbrite, occurred approximately 39,000 years ago. According to research published in Geochemistry, Geophysics, Geosystems, and data from INGV, this event ejected between 181 and 265 cubic kilometers of dense rock equivalent material. It was classified VEI-7, the largest volcanic eruption in Europe in the past 200,000 years. Pyroclastic flows raced across more than 30,000 square kilometers. Ash blanketed the Mediterranean and reached as far as the Russian plains. Some researchers believe this catastrophe contributed to the decline of Neanderthal populations across the region. The second major event came 15,000 years ago. The Neapolitan Yellow Tuff eruption expelled approximately 40 to 50 cubic kilometers of magma. Though smaller than its predecessor, it created a nested caldera roughly 10 kilometers in diameter within the older structure. The tuff from this eruption now forms the distinctive yellow rock quarried throughout Naples for centuries. But what matters most is what scientists have only recently begun to understand. Since 2005, Campi Flagre has displayed unmistakable signs of awakening. INGV's monitoring network has recorded exponential increases in earthquake activity. By mid-2024, swarms were producing hundreds of events per month. The largest recorded earthquake during this unrest cycle reached magnitude 4.6 on June 30, 2025. Ground uplift continues at rates between 10 and 15 millimeters per month. Carbon dioxide emissions from the Solfatara and Pichirelli fumarole systems have risen dramatically. Temperatures at the Pichirelli vent have exceeded 97 degrees Celsius, with some readings approaching boiling point. These are not subtle changes. They are measurable, 
documented escalations that have prompted the Italian government to allocate hundreds of millions of euros for emergency planning. The question that haunts every volcanologist is simple. What happens next? In 2012, scientists from INGV Naples and the Scottish University's Environmental Research Centre launched the Campi Flegre Deep Drilling Project. The goal was to understand the caldera's structure by extracting core samples from 501 meters beneath the surface at Bagnoli, on the western edge of Naples. Drilling into an active volcanic system carries inherent risks. Public fear centered on the possibility that drilling might trigger seismic events or even an eruption. Previous geothermal drilling plans had been canceled following major earthquake swarms. Critics warned that puncturing the caldera's tap could destabilize the system beneath. But scientists argued that the knowledge gained would outweigh the dangers. The drill site was positioned deliberately away from the caldera's center, where strata had collapsed and the picture would be confused. By drilling at the morphological edge, researchers could examine intact rock layers and reconstruct the volcano's history with unprecedented precision. What they found challenged everything they thought they knew. The drill cores revealed a detailed stratigraphic record spanning tens of thousands of years. Scientists used argon isotope dating on feldspar crystals to establish precise ages for different layers. At 439 meters depth, they found tufts approximately 39,000 years old, consistent with the Campanian ignimbrite eruption. Between 250 and 160 meters, volcanic rocks from the Neapolitan yellow tuff appeared. But the critical discovery lay in what the fossils revealed. Deeper layers, between 250 and 501 meters, contained no marine fossils whatsoever. This indicated that the volcano stood well above sea level more than 35,000 years ago. However, shallower layers contained microfossils indicating an oceanic environment. The conclusion was inescapable. Sometime between 17,000 and 35,000 years ago, this land had sunk below the sea. Caldera collapse had occurred. What stunned the scientists was not that collapse happened, that was expected. What stunned them was how little the ground had fallen. The Campanian ignimbrite eruption was one of the largest in Earth's recent history. Standard volcanic models predicted that evacuating such enormous volumes of magma should have produced a proportionally enormous collapse. The caldera floor should have dropped hundreds of meters. But the drill cores told a different story. The volume of infilling caldera deposits was surprisingly small, particularly for the Campanian ignimbrite event. The area affected by collapse appeared to be smaller than previous estimates suggested. Most significantly, the collapse did not extend into the central city of Naples as some earlier models had proposed. This finding did not mean the eruption was weak. The pyroclastic deposits scattered across southern Italy proved otherwise. Instead, it meant something about the mechanism of collapse was fundamentally different than expected and that difference has profound implications for today. The fossil evidence painted an even stranger picture. Before the great eruptions, Campi Flegre stood above the waves. The absence of marine organisms in the deepest cores proved this conclusively. Then, after the eruptions and the collapse they triggered, the sea flooded in. The microfossils in the shallower layers marked this transition. By combining isotopic dating, fossil analysis, and stratigraphic reconstruction, researchers established a timeline. The collapse occurred between roughly 17,000 and 35,000 years ago, bracketed by the two major eruptions. The land sank, the sea entered, and over subsequent millennia, volcanic deposits and sediments filled the depression. What the fossils could not explain was the paradox at the heart of the data. The pattern of collapse sizes defied conventional logic. The older eruption, the Campanian ignimbrite, was far larger. It ejected between 181 and 265 cubic kilometers of material, yet it produced a smaller collapse than scientists expected. The younger eruption, the Neapolitan yellow tuff, was significantly smaller. It released approximately 40 to 50 cubic kilometers of magma. Yet this event appeared to create a more substantial collapse, forming the nested caldera structure visible today. By every standard model, this should have been reversed. 
larger evacuations of magma should produce larger collapses, scientists were left searching for explanations. The research team, led by Giuseppe De Natale of INGV, proposed a hypothesis that sent ripples through the volcanological community. What if the Campanian ignimbrite did not primarily erupt from Campi Flegre itself? Evidence supported this alternative interpretation. Volcanic material from the Campanian ignimbrae has been found north of the caldera, along fracture systems outside the main structure. If the eruption vented primarily through these northern fractures, with Campi Flegre serving only as a peripheral vent, the small collapse would make sense. The magma chamber beneath the caldera would have remained largely intact. This explanation explains the puzzling relationship between eruption size and collapse magnitude. If most of the magma exited through fractures to the north, the chamber beneath Campi Flegre would not have emptied sufficiently to trigger a major collapse. The roof would have remained supported. But this explanation carries a terrifying corollary. If the magna chamber did not fully empty 39,000 years ago, it may still be pressurized. The system beneath Campi Flegre may never have truly released its accumulated energy. Standard models assume that caldera-forming eruptions reset the volcanic clock, emptying the reservoir and beginning a new cycle of slow accumulation. But if the chamber remained substantially intact, the pressure never fully dissipated. This changes every risk calculation. The potential for pressure buildup becomes far greater than previously assumed. The magma reservoir may have been accumulating energy not just since the last eruption in 1538, but for millennia longer. Every earthquake swarm, every pulse of ground uplift may be drawing on a reservoir of pressure that scientists had assumed was long ago spent. The implications for the hundreds of thousands of people living above the system are profound. The epicenter of current unrest lies precisely where the theory predicts it should. The town of Pozzuoli and the Solfatara crater experience the highest rates of ground uplift. The most intense earthquake swarms cluster in this zone. Gas emissions from Pisciarelli have reached crisis levels. This is not random. If the magma chamber remained intact after the Companion Ignimbrite eruption, the zone of highest stress would be directly above the pressurized reservoir. The current unrest maps almost perfectly onto this predicted geometry. Scientists at INGV continue monitoring these patterns, searching for signals that might indicate whether the system is approaching a critical threshold. But predicting what comes next remains extraordinarily difficult. A January 2026 study published in Communications Earth and Environment by researchers from INGV and the University of Geneva modeled worst-case scenarios for the ongoing unrest. Their conclusion was cautiously reassuring. Current conditions do not appear compatible with an imminent magmatic eruption. However, even the authors acknowledge significant uncertainty. If ground uplift continues at current rates for decades, the magma source could potentially reach dimensions comparable to what fueled the 1538 Monte Nuevo eruption. The hypothesis that Brady Sizem is driven by successive magma intrusions at approximately 4 kilometers depth remains difficult to verify directly. Scientists simply do not know how close the system is to failure. There is a danger that receives far less attention than it deserves. Phreatic eruptions, driven not by magma but by superheated water flashing to steam, can occur with devastating suddenness. According to the USGS, these steam-driven explosions happen when groundwater is heated by magmatic activity to extreme temperatures. The intense heat causes near-instantaneous evaporation. The result is an explosion of steam, rock, and volcanic bombs that can occur without the warning signs typically associated with magmatic eruptions. No fresh lava rises to the surface. No sustained tremor announces the event the hydrothermal system simply fails catastrophically. Campi Flegre hosts one of the most active hydrothermal systems on Earth. The Solfatara and Piscirelli fumaroles vent continuously. The ground is saturated with hot acidic fluids. If pressure in this system exceeds a critical threshold, a phreatic explosion could devastate the surrounding area with little or no warning. For the populations living within the red zone, this represents a hazard that evacuation plans may not adequately address. And the red zone contains more than half a million people. Campi Flegre is the most densely populated volcanic region on Earth. 
According to Italy's Civil Protection Department, approximately 500,000 people live within the red zone designated for mandatory evacuation in case of an eruption. Another 800,000 reside in the yellow zone at risk from volcanic ashfall. The infrastructure challenges are staggering. Narrow streets wind through ancient neighborhoods, historic buildings stand beside modern apartments, many constructed without proper permits. During evacuation drills in 2024, officials confronted the reality that moving this many people in 72 hours would require coordination beyond anything ever attempted. Maria Esposito has lived in Pozueli her entire life. Each morning, she checks the walls of her apartment for new cracks and listens for the rumble that sometimes wakes her at night. Her grandmother survived the evacuations of the 1980s when thousands fled as the ground rose more than a meter in just two years. Now Maria watches the news reports and wonders if history will repeat itself. We live with it, she says quietly. We have always lived with it, but we do not forget what lies beneath. Even a small eruption could trigger chaos, roads blocked by panicked traffic, communication systems overwhelmed, hospitals unable to evacuate critical patients. The scenarios modeled by emergency planners reveal vulnerabilities that cannot be easily fixed. The population density that makes Campi Flegre so dangerous also makes it nearly impossible to protect. And the volcano does not operate on human schedules. Scientists continue monitoring every tremor, every gas emission, every millimeter of ground movement. The network of seismic stations, GPS receivers, and geochemical sensors represents one of the most sophisticated volcanic surveillance systems in the world. INGV publishes weekly bulletins tracking the caldera's vital signs, but monitoring is not prediction. The discovery that Campi Flegre's largest eruption produced an unexpectedly small collapse has forced a fundamental reassessment of this volcano's behavior. The possibility that the magma chamber remained pressurized for tens of thousands of years challenges assumptions built into every risk model. What scientists know with certainty is this. The caldera is active, the unrest is real, the population is enormous, and the geological history revealed by deep drilling suggests this system may be capable of surprises that no current model anticipates. What remains unknown is whether the next eruption lies decades away or far closer, whether the signs appearing now are the same signs that preceded the 1538 eruption or whether they indicate something entirely different whether the low-level collapse means the system is safer than feared, or whether it means a reservoir of pressure has been building for 39,000 years. If Campi Flegre is not what we thought it was, then what is it really?